It's been a little over six months since I graduated from engineering. Looking back, there were a few things I wish I had known before graduating that I'm going to share with you. Tip number one, if you want to achieve a good balance between studying and socializing, treat it like a job. Go to class and go to the library from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 9 to 6. Then once the clock hits 5 or 6, put your pen, laptop, or tablet away, and then go socialize, party, or have a little bit of fun, or take some time to yourself afterwards. This will add structure to your life to make sure you're doing enough work to get a good grade, but still give you enough time to socialize. The only exception to this is if it's exam season and you have to study from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but that's only like one or two weeks of the entire semester. For every other week, treat school the same way you would treat a regular job. Set hard boundaries for when you need to study and then hold yourself accountable to them. Not much is going on in the mornings anyway, so once you get your work done, then you can go out and have some fun or socialize. A little bonus tip, if you're a commuter student and you don't live right on campus, do yourself a favor and stay on campus in between classes instead of going home. This will make you more effective since you'll spend less time traveling and there's no PS5 in the library. The quote unquote three laws of engineering is something I learned after graduating from someone else and it kind of stuck with me so I'm going to share it with you. Sleep more than you study, study more than you party, and party or socialize as much as you can. I think these laws speak for themselves as to how important school life balance is especially in engineering. Moving on to the third tip, compare your grades to the class average. Let's say the class average for a particular course is 75%. If you happen to score maybe between 74 to 80%, kind of somewhere around that average, then you're doing a good job and you don't need to change your study habits. However, if you score well above the average, like 95% or something, that's great, but that probably means you're putting in too much work. Ideally, you should study a little less and maybe focus on other aspects of university, like getting internships or having a little bit of a social life. But if you can manage to get such high grades, have a social life and get internships, then kudos to you. I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing an amazing job. Unfortunately, that's only like a small percentage of like most engineering students. But on the other hand, if you're scoring really low, like let's say you're getting 60% or lower, then you should spend a lot more time focusing and prioritizing school and studying. Figure out what your obstacles are and talk to your professors for some guidance. Let's talk about relationship and dating in engineering. It's no surprise that engineering and honestly STEM in general is heavily dominated by males. To prove it to you, my graduating engineering class did a survey and we found that we had about 70% male and around 28% female. This number has gone up a lot significantly since the early 1900s where there were no girls in engineering and I'll hope will continue to go up. But for now, in general, this can make relationships a little bit of a challenge in engineering. Not impossible though, but before getting into the tips about this topic, let's look at some data. This was survey data about what relationships and dating was like in my graduating engineering class that I think you may find interesting. Out of roughly 150 students, approximately 73% of them were in relationships during university. These relationships lasted anywhere between 1 to 84 months, with the average being around 26 months. A large number of relationships started through class, online dating, and extracurriculars. But here's where it starts to get a little interesting. The survey asked all the engineering students if they ever had a crush on someone, and approximately 62.6% .6 of them said yes. So the next logical question you would ask is, during your 5 years of engineering, how many people were you attracted to? Most people said 2 to 4, which makes sense, but there were a few people that said 30, which it's pretty crazy. If someone has a crush, the brave thing to do would be to tell them and maybe try to pursue a relationship. Out of the 62.6% .6 of people that had crushes, only half of them actually told the other person. So the next question that comes to mind is, did they say yes or did they say no? Well, the data shows that unfortunately only 37.7% of them actually said yes and started dating. I kind of feel bad for the other 60% that got rejected, but hey, that's just life. But with the data that we just showed, there are three things that I think you should keep in mind when pursuing relationships in university, especially engineering. First, the traditional advice is that you should stay away from dating and relationships throughout your time in university because engineering is extremely hard and you don't want any distractions like dating or relationships. I see where they're coming from, but I don't agree with it and here's why. Your time in university is special because this is the last time that you're going to be surrounded by people your own age that have the same interests as you. Literally everyone around your age from all over the world came to this university to study a common interest. It's like the perfect place to find a significant other. So if you want to get married in the future or be in a serious relationship, then I think university is a great place to do that. Second, although university can be a good place to find love, you shouldn't make it a priority in your first year. That's because in your first year, you have so many new things coming at you like school, professors, textbooks, internships, etc. So adding a relationship on top of that may be very overwhelming. So save your quest for finding a soulmate for your later years in university. Third, if you have a crush on someone in university or in class, literally just tell them. If they say no, you're in the same predicament you're already in. So just shoot your shot. 
I definitely can't make a video like this without talking about internships. As an engineering student, getting an internship should be one of your top priorities in school. The obvious reason is that it gives you experience that can help you get a job after you graduate. The less obvious reason is working as an intern can allow you to see what it is you're actually working towards in school. It sort of gives you a peek of what your future will look like after you graduate. If you like your life during the internship, then that's a sign you're on the right track. I made a bunch of videos in the past talking about how to get them, even if you have absolutely zero experience. But essentially, to summarize it in three steps, First, work on personal projects or join engineering student design teams. Second, create a resume or portfolio with these projects. Third, apply to jobs on LinkedIn. And bonus point, don't be afraid to message others on LinkedIn, even if you don't know them, for advice, hiring questions, or even interview requests. As long as you're polite and respectful with your message, no one is going to perceive it as being rude. You may get a lot of people ignoring you or rejecting you, but that's fine. Rejection is just redirection and you only just need a few people to get back to you. The crazy thing is applying to jobs on LinkedIn, messaging and connecting with random people on the internet is completely free. If you want to increase your chances of getting a response to people you message or connect with on LinkedIn, then consider getting LinkedIn Premium. The first month is free, but then I think you have to pay like 50 or $70 a month afterwards. They're not sponsoring me to say this, but I've just used it in the past and found it very helpful. After you get your first job, any job you get afterwards is usually based on who you know more than anything else. Make and maintain connections with as many classmates as you can, people you meet at work, and anyone that seems like they have their life together. Getting your first job is usually the hardest part, but once you've built some connections, getting jobs later on will be a lot easier. It's important to realize that because a pattern I've seen amongst graduated engineers is they'll get a job, work there for maybe like two or three years, then move, work at another job for maybe another two or three years, then move again. And the reason a lot of them do this is because usually once they switch jobs, they'll get like a pay raise and some kind of promotion. Make a backup plan. It's very common for engineers to at least be working in a slightly different discipline or field than what they studied in university. Also, a number of kids in my engineering class went on to leave engineering completely. Even if you don't want to have a backup plan, open yourself up to dropping into other courses just to see if maybe a different discipline will be a better fit for you and kind of what you're looking for just in case. So essentially, just because you picked a particular major doesn't mean that you have to stick with that and nothing else for the rest of your life. For the eighth tip, let's answer the question of, is it okay to just think about your engineering job as an actual job that pays the bills and nothing more? This is a very common question because maybe you got into engineering when you were young and now you're not sure if you're truly passionate about it. Maybe you discover something else that you truly like and want to spend more time on that. The short answer is yes, that is completely fine. Your manager or boss won't hate you for not loving engineering completely. However, ideally you should have another project or hobby that you're working on on the side that truly makes you passionate. That way you don't feel bored, depressed, or unfulfilled with your days. Also, another thing to keep in mind is you may hate some engineering jobs, but you may be super passionate about other types of engineering jobs. That's another reason why internships are so important because it helps you kind of try different aspects of engineering when you're still a student before you have to actually commit to a full-time job. But it really depends on the company, the work that you're doing, and the people that you work with on how happy and how passionate you'll be about the work that you're doing. I tend to find that working at startups makes me more passionate about the work in comparison to working at larger corporate companies. If you've ever asked yourself, how do senior engineers so much and what do I need to do to get to that point? You're not alone. I like to call this senior engineer intimidation. When you do your first internship or start your first full-time engineering job, you're going to be learning a lot. But the senior engineer will somehow be more efficient than you and will just be able to think of solutions that you never even thought of, which can make you feel kind of worthless. The way to get over this is to think about it this way. You're probably in your late teens or maybe in your early 20s. If you have younger siblings or maybe family members that are around five or six years old, they probably think you're a magician because of everything you can do. And everything you know, they can ask you things like what time is it and you're able to immediately know what device will tell you the time and how to use that device. For them, it seems like magic. You can also read and write every word they can think of. You can also do math in your head that they can't. And the reason you're able to do that is because you have an additional 10, 15, 20 years of life experience over them. Also, realize that work is very different than school. In real life, there's no professor waiting for you to give a wrong answer so they can fail you. A very useful tip I got from a senior engineer I knew is this. One of the major turning points to feel a lot less intimidated at work is to carve out a niche for yourself where you really know your stuff. It makes you so much more comfortable to ask dumb questions. Like, yeah, I know I'm blatantly confused and ignorant about this one topic. That's because my mind is thinking about this other topic that I know really, really well. And that just makes it a lot easier to learn about stuff that are outside of your niche without feeling stupid or dumb. Also, if you want to learn things really fast for more senior engineers, ask them a lot of questions like how things go wrong and how certain parts fail. Make non-engineering friends. 
This helps with basic socialization and is a very important tip when it comes to maintaining balance in your life. It's easy to spend all your time with your engineering friends and classmate, but then you forget that outside of your building, no one thinks your calculus jokes are that funny. Find out what the business majors laugh about because you have to get along with them professionally. Also, making friends outside of engineering can help you find a relationship or a soulmate if that's something you're interested in. Because although engineering is 70% male, other majors tend to be a little bit more balanced. Tip number 11 is experience or try blue collar jobs. A blue collar job is a type of job that requires manual labor like construction workers for example. Now you don't have to work those jobs if you're not interested in them but as an engineer you should be exposed to what they do. An engineer's job mainly involves them sitting behind a desk or working on a design maybe in an office. Now the blue collar workers they're going to be the ones who are actually building your design. And in general, the people who work blue collar jobs tend to really, really hate the engineers, especially the fresh ones. Having some kind of experience and understanding of blue collar workers is really important because too many engineers tend to be jerks towards them because they think they're underneath them. Which is completely wrong because the working relationships between engineers and blue collar workers are really, really important. But that's it, these are 11 tips that I wish I knew before graduating engineering from the University of Waterloo. For a similar video with more tips, check out this video, or for a breakdown on what exactly goes down in an engineering degree, check out this video. I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!